Okay, everyone. Hello. Um, welcome to the uh, the last um, stage, really, of the Fantastic Beast mask making project. Um, this is the final tutorial that I'm going to film for you. Um, by this stage, or by this point, the idea is that you have hopefully um, finished sculpting and creating the structure of the mask. And then in last week's tutorial, there were a few tips and ideas about how to go about painting and decorating the outside. So on mine here, um, just to recap, I've got a basic coat of some leftover household emulsion paint, just whatever colours I happen to have lying around. So I've got this light blue paint here. That's been painted all over the entire thing. And then using a variety of readily available drawing materials, pencils, felt tip pens, marker pens, and even food colouring for the eye here. Um, I've uh, added detail by working into the shadowy shaded areas, okay, with darker drawing materials than my marker pens or my pencil, okay, scribbling away. And then I've used different colours to highlight other edges, so I've used a pink here on some of the edges of the forms, like that. Okay, also a little bit around the bottom of the eye here and about on the top, I don't know if you can see that. And the final thing that I've done, which I'm not sure I showed you last time, um, was a tiny little dot of white here in the eye. This is just Tipex, like correction fluid that you might have around the place. Or failing that, you can even cut out a little disc, a little small disc of white paper, about the size that you would get from a hole punch. Um, and you could just glue that on there. Um, this is a good idea because it gives you um, the idea of the eye being a reflective surface, which obviously it should be. Um, so, so that's kind of the, the recap of the, the painting and the drawing. Um, just wanted to give you today as well a couple of other ideas about how you can take this on even further and be still more imaginative with how you customise and, and add to the mask structure. And what I've got here is I've got um, a few dried leaves that I've collected. Um, this one here, I'm not sure what the name of this plant is, um, but this is, yeah, this one. It's like a common kind of house plant. I think it's maybe a cheese plant, possibly. Um, this is a, a leaf which has been uh, cut from that and flattened and dried out, so it's really, really crispy now. And I've started to break off the kind of petals from the leaf like this. Um, I realised that they would make quite good uh, sort of additional shapes in the back of my mask here, just tucked behind the eye structure like that. They're almost like feathers. So the idea of using found materials, yeah, they can be sticks, twigs, dried leaves, feathers, um, anything at all, buttons, beads, anything at all that you've got that you think, yeah, that would add a bit of extra texture, a bit of detail, a bit of individuality to what I've made. Um, then you can go ahead and you can use that. So I've, I've stuck some of these in here. These have just been glued in place using a little bit of the PVA glue, which I gave you all to take away with you. So it's exactly the same glue material that you've been using earlier in the project. Um, with the oak leaves down here, these ones I've um, oops, snapped some of these away. I thought these could look kind of cool. So I'll just add it in underneath in the bottom here. Again, different, um, different uh, type of texture there with those kind of curled oak leaves. Looks pretty good. So, so that's kind of, that's the idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly glue these in place um, and then we'll pop it back on so that you can see what it looks like when it's being worn. Okay, so today's activity, and actually each lesson between now and the end of term is to try and get your mask up to a state of completion, something like this. Okay, so we'll have a look at it being worn. All right, so here we go. Here is the um, finished mask being worn. Okay, so you can see how it has the effect of transforming, you know, just a normal person into a kind of strange half man, half beast situation. And this is the way prosthetics work in film and and in kind of, you know, design for television and special effects. This is how it works. Now, can you just tip your head up, Isla, for us? There we go. Okay, and you get an idea that it sort of moves with the body, which is what it should do. Um, so that's it. Um, and then we've got the kind of extra bits and bits on the back here, like you can see. Well, it's kind of nice actually how it sort of blends in with your hair at the bottom here as well. It's pretty cool. 
so there we go so that is the conclusion you've got the last three weeks of term to just finish this off um, detail extra little bits and pieces of those of the sort that I've demonstrated today um, yeah good have fun go for it what we'd really like to do is to get a, a kind of gallery of these things um, of some sort at the end of term so if you're a little bit behind with the project don't worry um, we just want you to take your time to get it as complete as you possibly can um, before the end of term and then we're going to sort of exhibit these things hopefully when you come back so look after them and uh, yeah post what you did to Padlet and yeah hope you've enjoyed the project all right so good luck and we'll look forward to seeing what you come up with